Have you ever felt that the relentless string of tinnitus is taking over your day, taking over your focus, and taking over your serenity? You're really not alone. I've lived with severe tinnitus for over a decade now. I know exactly what you feel. But I also found a way to push back, to reduce the volume of tinnitus to a whisper with sound therapy. Hi, my name is Guy, and as I just explained, I've been living with severe tinnitus for over a decade now. I want you to really understand that sound therapy is not just a quick fix, it's a technique that is meant to tune down the noise of tinnitus. Ready to find out how? Let's go! Sound therapy isn't just playing background noise or background music. It's actually based on the concept of neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to adapt. Tinnitus can make the brain auditory um, centers too sensitive, but sound therapy can recalibrate this sensitivity. By consistently introducing sound, we can train the brain to deprioritize tinnitus and focus on other sounds. Okay, let's start talking about the sound options that we have for sound therapy. We'll start with a group of sounds which is pure sound therapy, like white noise, pink noise, and so on. And we'll start with white noise. White noise is like a sonic blanket. It's evenly distributed ac across all frequencies. It's, it's very good at masking tinnitus, but it can sound too harsh for some people. And that is exactly where pink noise comes in. Pink noise is just less um, loud on the high frequencies. So basically you have a pretty good range of frequencies, but the high frequencies are not, are not as loud as white noise. And that typically sounds more like a nature sound, like wind, and it's it's much more pleasing to listen to, at least to some people. So then we have brown noise. Brown noise is emphasizing the lower tones. So it sounds like a um, waterfall or like thunder. And it's really good for tinnitus that have lower frequencies. How to find what sounds work best for you? In general, and I emphasize in general, if your tinnitus is high frequency sounds, or if it's lower frequency sounds, you typically want to start at least to try the white noise for higher frequencies. And if white noise is too much for you, then try the pink noise. Um, if you have high frequency tinnitus, if you have again lower frequencies, you're gonna try the brown noise first and see how that goes. Tinnitus is just so unique and each person is so unique that it's really hard to say, oh, use white noise for high frequencies always. There are people that find the brown noise more relaxing even though they have um, high frequencies uh, tinnitus. And there are people that like white noise while they have um, lower tones, lower frequencies tinnitus. So I can't just tell you always do one thing, but what I can tell you is try different things and see what works for you. But again, the general concept is to match the frequencies to your tinnitus. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to play a few seconds of each pure sound therapy, like the white noise, pink noise, and brown noise. I'm going to display the name on the screen and I'm going to display we're going to play just like, you know, 10 seconds of each. Um, I'm not sure that you're going to get the difference through a video that I'm recording in the context of other things. But I'm gonna, I want to emphasize that on this channel, we have white noise, pink noise, and brown noise on our playlist. And we also have a playlist that have combination of music and the pure sound therapies. So you have all these options in the two playlists that we have on this channel. Try them.
Let's talk about how to use sound therapy because in order for it to be effective and to really make a difference for you, you must follow a few simple rules. The first rule is that you do not want the volume of sound therapy to be too loud. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason, if the sound therapy is too loud, you're going to aggravate your tinnitus. You're going to just make things worse. So definitely you don't want to do that. The second thing, remember, we wanted to use the neuroplasticity concept where the brain can adjust and, and you know, listen to two different sounds and ignore tinnitus, right? So the way we want to do it is we want to play the sound therapy at a volume which is just a little bit lower than your tinnitus. You want to, I know it sounds weird, but you want to hear your tinnitus and then just a little bit lower than that, you want to hear the sound therapy. That way your brain is trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here? I'm, I'm hearing this other sound and it's not a tinnitus. I need to focus on that. By doing that, you're going you're gonna to teach your brain to ignore tinnitus over time. The other thing that you want to do is you want to start with a short period of time where you listen to this. So I'm just throwing examples. Again, each one of us is unique and you should try it. But take five minutes, for example, and listen to one of the sound therapies and see how you feel about it. If you can take more of that, it doesn't bother you, then maybe try 10 minutes. But then I would say stop. And then give you give yourself a you know some time to kind of relax the senses, and then after you know half an hour or an hour, try again five or ten minutes and see how it goes. The idea basically is that you introduce this in short period of times. Let's say ten minutes three times a day, and then you can say ten minutes five times a day, and then you can go to twenty minutes three times a day, and so on. The idea is that you eventually listen or incorporate sound therapy into your day. So if I'm just walking, I'm reading email, or I'm uh, doing things that do not require me to communicate with people, I can just listen to the sound therapy in the background, and the more is great, uh, the more you listen to it. But again, if you feel that you get to a point where, okay, it's too much, then stop it. Don't don't force yourself to just listen to sound therapy. Again, start with shorter period of time, multiple times a day, and then just increase the duration. And then again, start try to listen to it uh, still two or three times a day. And don't forget, you can actually incorporate that into your sleep routine as well. So. If tinnitus is really interrupting your sleep, then you can listen to sound therapy while going to sleep. That should help as well. Now, here is something that I think is definitely counterintuitive. As someone that has tinnitus and is trying to use sound therapies, avoid silence. I know this was a surprise for me too, but think about this for a second. When you have silence, what is your brain focusing on? tinnitus and that makes tinnitus worse because your brain is just latching to tinnitus and then we get into the negative cycle so if you are in a situation where you're in a silence or there's no other um, sources of sound this is exactly where you want to use sound therapy you want to have that second you know source of sound that your brain is going to try to focus on and by doing that, ignoring the tinnitus. So if you have any period of time during the day where you just have silence, incorporate sound therapy into it. Now that we covered the different sound therapies and how to use them correctly and how to start to use them over, you know, just kind of get used to them over a period of time, let's talk about another sound therapy which is music. It's either, it can be either relaxing music or nature sounds 
or anything which is not really just a white nose, pink nose and brown nose. I, I'll be completely honest with you. Some people told me, hey, you're talking about this white nose, pink nose and brown nose, but some of us can tolerate those silly sounds because it's just like listening to something that is not natural, right? And I can understand that. Some people find it, find it hard to just listen to those pure sound therapies. That's where we can do one, uh, we can do two different things actually. We can either mix the pure sound therapy, like the white nose and so on, with music. So you literally mix them into, the, into one soundtrack and you have the sound therapy at a lower volume and the music at an equal or a little bit a higher volume. And by doing that, now you are listening to both. So it's, it doesn't sound so unnatural. And again, reminding you that on this channel, we have those playlists that will mix music with sound therapy. So try them. The second thing we can do is just listen to nature sounds or music which is relaxing. Let me give you an example. If you listen to music like a guitar sound, a guitar playing, it's typically hitting different uh, frequencies, right? And different uh, notes. And by doing that, you really are providing something that can really help your brain focus on something else. And again, it's doing the same, it, it's using the same concept of neuroplasticity to teach the brain to ignore tinnitus. So while the uh, white noise and pink noise and so on are really focused on specific frequencies and, and focused on uh, teaching your brain to ignore those, to ignore tinnitus in the same frequencies, you can also use music. You can also use nature sounds. And that should provide the same effect as long as the sounds that you're listening to um, have different frequencies. And typically, if you listen to something like um, cricket sounds, for example, or water sound, or just relaxing music, they typically have different, different frequencies that will provide the same effect, basically. And it wouldn't feel like listening to something that is so unnatural. So, in conclusion, remember that um, sound therapy is not just a quick fix. It's not just something that you do because you don't have other options. Sound therapy is a major technique in the fight against tinnitus. It's been a huge help for me, and I have severe tinnitus. Tinnitus for me is high frequencies and low frequencies, and it's, it's pretty loud. So I'm telling you from my own experience that sound therapy is not just something that you do because you don't have other options. It's a serious tool that you use to fight tinnitus. Also remember um, the, ru the rules that we talked about how not to use sound therapy, or actually how to use sound, sound therapy correctly. You want it to be effective, because if you use sound therapy and it's not effective for you, it will just be frustrating and you'll stop. So follow the rules. Remember the volume. Remember to introduce it gradually. Start with short period of, period of times and increase them gradually. And then eventually the more the more you can listen to sound therapy during the day, and especially when there's silence. Remember, you do not want silence because that's when your brain focuses on tinnitus. You want to avoid that. So the more that you follow these rules, the more sound therapy should be effective for you and should start really helping you ignore tinnitus. If you have any questions, um, if you have any feedback, if I forgot to mention something that really works well for you, remember, use the comments below and let's communicate. Really think about sound therapy as a journey to really teach your brain to ignore tinnitus. It's, it's going to make a big difference, trust me. 
So use the comments below, give me any feedback, send any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.